Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Alton Park for your final dose of Ginetta racing action, uh, at least for now, at Alton Park. The season opening weekend uh, is not even a third of the way through, really. We'll have six more Ginetta races for you on Easter Monday. But for now, it is the opening round of the Protar Motorsport Ginetta GT Championship. Uh, and it is the third of the Ginetta Championships to hit the track here this Saturday afternoon. And we've got the uh, cars lining up on the grid as we speak a grid that uh, for what it lacks in numbers certainly for me makes up for uh, in competitive nature we've got i would say at least six or seven drivers who really ought to be capable of winning races in this championship i'm not sure whether they're all doing the full season but uh, at least here this weekend it looks very finely poised indeed after qualifying certainly nothing really to choose uh, between the top half of the grid and i suspect there are others who will feel that they could have gone quicker uh, and could go quicker uh, in the race, which is only a minute or so away. The cars are just about to depart uh, on their green flag lap, led by the Ginetta safety car uh, in what are still pretty favourable, if slightly chillier conditions at Alton Park than we had for our uh, Ginetta Junior and GT Academy races earlier on today. Uh, but still a dry track and uh, drivers keen to try and get their 2024 campaign off to the ideal start. Now, those of you who have followed Ginetta racing over recent years will recognise, no doubt, the uh, rebranded for last year, Ginetta GT Championship, which uh, for 2023 incorporated both G56 uh, GT, uh, G56 Ginettas and GT5 class Ginettas. Well, this time around, they're all G56s. So one class of car will be a driver split across a couple of different classes and they line up for the opening race of the season and as so, Scott McKenna on pole position. He's got Mackenzie Douglas for company in the Fox Motorsport number 24 car on that front row. Matt Shaw moves up from the GT Academy Championship where he was the rookie champion a year ago. And he'll be one of the Alma front runners this year. He starts third alongside Luke Garlic with Connor Garlic starting on the inside of row number two uh, alongside Nick White, who was the GT Academy champion overall in 2023. Alex Todd Jones, he did British GT a few years ago, finds himself back at the wheel of a Ginetta for 24. He starts seventh alongside James Townsend with Carl Garnett and Paul Livesey sharing row five. Sixth row, back row of the grid, all on his own, Sean Fleming. He had some issues in qualifying. I'm pretty sure the AM driver uh, was some 7.6 seconds off the outright pace, but 3.6 seconds uh, off Paul Lindsay, who was the next car ahead of him. Speaking of, we ride on board uh, with Paul in the MDD Racing number 31 car. He'll be starting from uh, the fifth row of the grid. But like I said, a grid that really is stacked with talent, genuinely stacked with talent. Scott McKenna, uh, who starts on pole position. Uh, as I said, with some British GT experience. Nick White, another who I expect to go well. We've got an onboard camera aboard car number 57, the Raceway Motorsport driver. And uh, he is looking, as a couple of drivers are actually, to make that step up to the next level of the Ginetta Racing Ladder. Uh, Luke Garlic, who uh, is, was the champion uh, last year in the GT5 class, He'll be uh, carrying an onboard camera as well. But we have got a good number of drivers who I think are going to be very, very evenly matched. It's a circuit where overtaking is at a premium. I feel we're obliged to point that out before a race at Alton Park. But we've seen in the past some fantastic Ginetta racing. And these G56s, the GTP class cars, uh, certainly provide some of that good racing. We've uh, never really had a dull one, actually. And uh, I'm sure this one will be absolutely of the same fashion. We will have a two-by-two -two rolling start gone are the standing starts uh, from both this and the GT Academy Championship. Only the juniors now uh, have a standing start and a beautiful sight they make as they come two by two out of Lodge Corner over Deer Leap where they will face shortly the red lights on the starting gantry. Once they go out, they'll break ranks. We'll be away and racing at Alton Park for the final time today. And who is going to get the jump into Old Hall Corner for the first time? On the left-hand side of the screen, Scott McKenna. On the right, Mackenzie Douglas. It is the former, is it, who will get the advantage? Well, maybe not. He got into the corner ahead, but slightly slow on the exit. We could have a lead change down at Cascades. That looked like Matt Shaw who went a little bit wide onto the grass. He's almost off again heading into Cascades corner. But at the head of the field we do have a lead change. Mackenzie Douglas has got himself in front of a very, very wayward Scott McKenna who knew the importance of trying to maintain that trap position. He hasn't managed to do so and he will now have a real job finding his way past Mackenzie Douglas who did uh, the final round of this championship at Donington Park last year, just the final three races of the year, and notched up a podium in one of them, so we know he is quick. Former Ginetta GT5 uh, runner uh, was Mackenzie Douglas, and he has hit the front of the pack then as they head for the Britain chicane for the first time of asking. 
through the left, through the right, over the top of the hill at uh, Hilltop. There goes the number 31 machine, that's Paul Livesey. But at the front of the field, car number 24. Look at the battle for third there, Luke Garlic, number 71, peeking to the inside of uh, Matt Shaw. Matt Shaw was 17 times a class winner in the rookie class last year in the GT Academy Chip Series and uh, came out in the end, I seem to recall, second overall in the championship. Really took the fight to Nick White uh, through the second half of the season. Maybe third, actually, uh, in the championship now I think about it. Nick White, Ravi Rami doing all of the winning, really, in the early part of last year. But Matt Shaw is being given a real work over here by Luke Garlick and, in fact, by, I believe, Nick White, who we ride on board with. And that's Luke Garlick just drifting a bit wide uh, out of Druids. Nick White thinking, thinking about the move into Lodge Corner, but doing more than thinking about the move is Connor Garlick, who launches to the inside of Alex Toth Jones and relieves him of sixth position. So he's now back ahead of Toth Jones, back where he started. Um, in fact, no, one place below where he started, Connor Garlick. Connor started inside the top five, but didn't have a great run through the first couple of corners. So one lap in the books then. There goes the number 63 of Connor Garlic. Bit of real estate now to try and uh, bridge to close in on this three-way fight for third place, which drops downhill through Denton's into Cascades. Good little scrap here between uh, Carl Garnett and Paul Livesey for ninth position. They have, as in qualifying, dropped uh, Sean Fleming, unfortunately. But um, everybody else pretty much running line astern. Slide their way through Ireland Bend, hard onto the brakes, a bumpy, undulating braking zone into the steeply cambered right-hand hairpin at Shell. Where actually Matt Shaw, I would say, is getting away now from Luke Garlic. I don't know whether Luke's had a moment somewhere. He was closer than this at the beginning of the lap, and now actually more um, concerned, I suspect, with what Nick White and Connor Garlic are doing behind him. We ride on board with Nick, who is the meat in this um, garlic sandwich. And uh, I don't think that sounds too appetising for Nick White right now. He'd rather find his way past Luke Garlic, which is not going to be an easy thing to do. Down onto the brakes, hopping over the curb through the right of Britain's, avoid that tyre stack on the left, and then a really tricky exit from that sequence through Nick and Brooke. As you go over a crest, the front of the car doesn't really want to bite. Very easy to pick up some mid-corner understeer, which perhaps is what happened there to Nick, because you can see he's dropped back by a length or so certainly compared to where he was when we first jumped on board with him, and now he's under threat from the charging Connor Garlic. Connor Garlic, fastest of anybody in Sector 1, in clean air, of course, and he's now right on their tail. It couldn't really be a lot closer for the race lead either, could it? These two were separated in qualifying, actually, by nearly four tenths in the favour of, in, of Scott McKenna, I should say. Uh, and, of course, he is now the one attacking to try and reclaim the lead uh, from Mackenzie Douglas as uh, they round Old Hall Corner, nose to tail. Fastest lap, unsurprisingly, on the first full flying lap set by McKenna. Where can he make the challenge, though? Reasonably lengthy braking zones in these cars, so uh, into places like the chicane and his lops, or maybe Lodge Corner, you can launch that attack, but you've got to be close enough to do so. So McKenna is latched on to the rear bodywork of the number 24 car. Scott McKenna, who we've seen out in a Toyota a couple of years ago in the British GT Championship, did half a season of Ginetta Juniors, actually, which was where he started his Ginetta racing career before moving up into the GT5 Championship, which he won in 2019. So he's had success with Ginetta, went on to race in British GT proper, and now making the step back to Ginetta racing, at least for this weekend, hopefully for the rest of the season but he'll want to kickstart the uh, year regardless with a race victory. There you can see the gap that they pulled over Matt Shaw third, fourth Luke Garlic, fifth Nick White, sixth Connor Garlic. These four still close enough together to suggest that uh, action could be on the horizon. White making his debut in this championship. Nick started his racing actually probably getting on for 10 years ago now, maybe something like 2015 or 16, I seem to recall, in the track day trophy uh, having presumably done some track day driving prior to that, made the step up into the track day trophy and uh, took him a few years of that before he then ventured into anything uh, more serious. Um, but uh, certainly now has established himself as a very, very rapid driver within the Ginetta racing category. And the battle between Nick and this man, Matt Shaw, for the AM class this year is going to be fascinating because, of course, Matt Shaw was beaten by Nick White in GT Academy last year, but through the second half of the season, I would argue was a little bit faster. And, um, and I'm sure that... Uh, Matt would argue he was a little bit faster as well. So and that's playing out here, isn't it? Because he's out-qualified Nick White by a few places, and he's a couple of places in the overall running order ahead of him too. Now, I think I'm right in saying, and 
I'm sure someone from Ginetta will correct me if I'm wrong, but unlike in the Academy series where you score points just based on your overall finishing positions, I think there is a separate point system uh, for the pros and the ams in this championship. So Matt Shaw running third overall, but much more interested in the fact that he is leading the uh, am class for the time being. And pretty comfortably there, you can see the gap he's got over Luke Garling, then the 57 car, that's the car chasing him down in that class of Nick White. But uh, he's still pre preoccupied with what Connor Garlick is doing behind him. Oh, a bit of a challenge for the lead down at his lops. McKenna thinking about it, but these two are so, so evenly matched. Mackenzie Douglas is not going to give this place up without a fight. It was only uh, last year, actually, that we saw Mackenzie racing in the Ginetta Junior Championship before making the step up, as I said, for that final round of the Ginetta GTs where he was a real star performer, now being given a real work over by Scott McKenna. Although, having said that, Scott drops back, actually, through Druids. Probably, along with Ireland Bend, maybe the hardest part of the circuit to be took right up behind another car. Not so much because of dirty air in cars like these, although they do generate a little bit of downforce, but more just because you're unsighted. It's a double apex right-hander at Druids, and uh, the second apex is over a little hump in the road, so you do not want to uh, turn in too early or too late to that apex. And of course, if you're tucked right up behind another car, it can be easy to do exactly that. Had a change on the timing screen there. Look between Alex Toth-Jones and Connor Garlic. Connor Garlic had a very slow final sector suggesting that maybe he's been off the road somewhere uh, because Toth Jones was a good few seconds behind him uh, last time I checked. I'm not sure if we can dig out a replay of some sort to explain that, but certainly, oh, here we go. Oh, no, I thought that was going to be a <laughs> ask and you shall receive moment. This is the leaders going through Lodge Corner. McKenna charging on after, and then, yep, yeah, there we go. There was the moment for Garlic, and uh, he does well to keep the car out of the barriers, actually, just about avoiding doing any major damage, but unfortunately drops back several seconds and ultimately one position in the running order. So leaders back over hill top then. We have just under 12 minutes to go. And still, it is definitely not certain here that Mackenzie Douglas is going to open his account with a race victory. Scott McKenna, I wouldn't say is yet throwing everything at this, but certainly throwing an awful lot at trying to find a way through, wriggling around under braking there uh, through the Hislop chicane. But uh, when you are chasing somebody who is quite clearly capable of doing about the same speed as you are, it's not easy to find a way past. And in fact, Mackenzie Douglas is responding to this by setting the outright fastest middle sector on this lap. So as hard as McKenna's pushing, Douglas so far has an answer to every question being posed of him. This really is playing out very similarly, actually, to how our GT Academy race uh, played out a little bit earlier on today, isn't it? When we saw James Nicholas get the lead at turn one and then defend, defend, defend as if his life depended on it and ultimately came home a race winner. Now, further back, Connor Garlic has caught back up to Alex Toth-Jones. He's kept it on the black stuff this time through Lodge Corner and he's going to think about a move, maybe not into Old Hall Corner, but setting himself up for the better exit. Takes the wide line in, cuts back to the late apex. That means he's on the throttle earlier. There's a gap, amazingly, left open to him on driver's left, but he just could not quite take advantage of that. I was really surprised that Toth Jones moved over to the right-hand side of the road there. Maybe he thought uh, Connor Garlic had a slight overlap, but he didn't. And so Toth Jones stays in front. A little bit surprised maybe that Alex Toth Jones uh, isn't able to go a little bit quicker than this, or maybe keep up with the cars in front of him a bit better. Alex, who again has a season of British GT under his belt about five years ago. Uh, spent two or three years, I seem to recall, in the GT5 challenge. But uh, this is a different car to try and learn, a tricky car to try and learn. I'm sure by the end of the season, we'll be talking about him as a much more regular front runner. But right now, he has his eyes locked on that rear view mirror. Look at him, you can see him looking up there to see which way Garlic was going to go. Connor tries the long way round at his lops, but to no avail. So at this point, the frustration starts to creep in for Conor Garlic. He knows he had the pace to challenge for a top five in this one. And the longer he spends tucked up behind that number 11 car, the less chance he's going to have of catching up to the group ahead. Because, of course, as Toth Jones defends, he's holding them both up uh, by about a second or so per sector. Conor Garlic really wants to try and get on with this. Gives Toth Jones a helping hand out of Druids. But uh, not enough in the end to unsettle the sixth place man. 
pulls the inside line right down the outside, attempts to go Connor Garlic again, not necessarily trying to go around the outside, but trying to get the switch back. And this time he really smacks into the back of Alex Toff Jones's car, rips the rear bodywork off car number 11, but still he cannot find a way through. This is a very robust defense being placed up by uh, Alex Toff Jones. And Connor Garlic is definitely growing in frustration. But this is the nature of racing around a circuit like this. It is narrow, there is one fast line, and even if you start defending from the car behind, as long as you park it on the apex, don't run wide on corner exit, there isn't really a way for them to come through. Sparks flying there off the kerb down at Cascades, but they were flying between the two cars as they rounded Lodge a few moments ago. Connor Garlic is, uh, well, actually not really quite as close as he'd like to be now, heading into the shell hairpin. Not missing anything out in front, by the way. Douglas is now six tenths clear of McKenna, having just set a personal best lap, uh, a 144.9, only a tenth off the fastest lap of the race set by McKenna earlier on. So that lead gap is growing. This is the battle, and it is for sixth position as they come out of Britain's. Here's a replay of the moment. You can see Garlic, he went to the wide line in, looks for the good exit, but then Tom Jones, savvy, parks it on the apex, waits until he feels that knock in the back, and that's his signal to accelerate away, knowing that he's prevented any chance of a switchback maneuver. Uh, from Connor. The front of Connor's car withstood that contact a little better than the back of Tom Jones. He's flashing the lights at him now. That's guaranteed to do nothing more than frustrate Alex and make him all the more determined, I'm sure, uh, to defend this position, which he does again into Druids. All Connor Garlic can do is keep forcing the defensive moves, try and time that run a bit better. He's all over the curve out of Druids, peeks to the inside line. We know what's coming here. He will go to the outside. He will try the switch back, and he will probably get a face full of Ginetta right on the apex. Or has he timed it better this time? He might just have managed to get the overlap as they come over the hill onto the bridge. Yes, he has. Nicely done by Connor Garlic. He's got the inside line, and that should now yield sixth position by the time they get to Old Hall Corner. He's late on the brakes. He dies for the apex. The car wriggles around a little under beneath him, but he has managed to find a way through. So Conor Garlic up into sixth position, separated by 27 thousandths of a second at the line, uh, but by Old Hall Corner, the move was done. Right, back to the leaders, still Douglas from McKenna, but that gap that was out to six tenths of a second is down to about 0.6 of a car length now as they exit Shell and head for the Britain chicane for the eighth time. We're well into the second half of the race now, about two thirds race distance. And as the sun starts to set, this becomes an even more spectacular battle. You can see the cars bottoming out on the curbs and the bumps and the dips around Alton Park. And uh, Spark starting to fly as McKenna again jinx to the inside. Not necessarily trying to force a move there, just trying to create that flash of movement, flash of colour uh, in the rearview mirror for Mackenzie Douglas. Maybe, he thinks, just enough to distract the race leader. But ultimately, that isn't what happens. And it is still car 24 that leads the race through Druid's corner again. McKenna peeks to the inside. Now that's probably going to compromise his exit speed a little bit, which means he's not going to be close enough for, in all likelihood uh, to challenge down at Lodge Corner, which really is the best place to try and overtake here in Alton, either on the way in or, as we just saw from Conor Garlic, by getting the drive over the crest of the hill. Difficult to get the power down there as the car goes light over that hill right on the apex and then plunge down through the dip into Old Hall Corner they go then. Douglas defends again. Does this give McKenna the chance to get the run on the exit? Bit too much curve maybe there for the race leader and McKenna has got the run. He's got the overlap, but he's got ultimately what will become the outside line for Cascades. Can he complete the manoeuvre? Yes, he can. Fantastic move. And back into the lead of the race goes Scott McKenna. That was supremely brave under braking, but he started that move really coming across the start finish line. He forced the defence out of uh, Mackenzie Douglas. He got the switch back, had such a good run down the Avenue that ultimately the move was almost done before the braking zone, but he still had to brake late, desperately late, and then trust that he could turn into the apex. That was fabulous racing from the pair of them, and it is now Scott McKenna, the pole sitter, back out in front, and I think he might have the speed now to pull away. Won't be easy, but I think he should be able to get uh, clear. It's looked like he's been the racier of the two, really, up until this point. Let's wait and see, though, whether Mackenzie Douglas can respond. The Fox Motorsport team will be willing him on from the pit lane, I'm sure. Further back, meanwhile, Carl Garnett versus Gary Town... Uh, versus uh, James Townsend, sorry. It, back in the day, when Carl Garnett was racing MX-5s, it would have been Gary Townsend that he was racing against, but it is James Townsend, uh, one of the uh, want-to-race-am drivers, who he is dicing with now. So Garnett's shaken off Paul Livesey, with whom he was scrapping earlier on. 
and now tries to find a way past Townsend for what is eighth overall, but as you can see from the graphic on the left-hand side of the screen, third place in the AM class, a class still led by Matt Shaw, uh, with Nick White second position, and uh, this the fight for a class podium. And again, like I said earlier on, you score within your own class in this series, so worth going for this for uh, Carl Garnett. Charge their way through that double apex right hander at Druids over the hump in the road, down through the dip. It is a proper old school circuit, this Alton Park. Surprisingly fast as well. A lot of people think of Alton as being a very tight and technical circuit. It has its technical areas, but it's got a surprisingly high average speed actually. And it's that that makes it such a favourite amongst the drivers, especially when you've got a thoroughbred race car such as these uh, Ginetta G56 GTPs at your disposal. But then swings through Old Hall Corner, heads back down towards the avenue and uh, cascades once again. Race leader Scott McKenna, 1.1 seconds clear of Mackenzie Douglas at the end of that ninth lap. At least a couple more still to go. Matt Shaw sits in third position, Luke Garlic fourth, Co uh, Nick White fifth. And this is Connor Garlic, who has been handed a five second penalty. Now I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark and say that's probably something track limits related. Uh, could, I suppose, be for the contact that he had with Alex Toth Jones earlier on. I'm not actually sure. Now I'll double check this on uh, the uh, timing system. But uh, either way, five seconds added on to his time. I'm unclear as to whether they've yet been added onto his time on the timing screen. I don't think they have, so that will likely drop him uh, behind Alex Toth Jones again, unless, of course, he can build a five second buffer uh, before the chequered flag comes out, which will be in two more laps because we've got two and a half minutes to go. They're lapping in the one and three quarter minute range. So we should have time for two more, but that matters little really now to Scott McKenna because he's lapping a second a lap quicker than Mackenzie Douglas uh, behind him. There is Matt Shaw, the AMP class leader. But he'll be very happy, I think, with his overall pace here. This is a big step up in machinery from the GT Academy car. The cars look exactly the same, but very, very different. Ooh, dear, don't uh, don't uh, make it look like I've put the curse of the commentator on you, Matt. That was nowhere near the apex at uh, Cascades. Uh, but yes, these cars running on slick tyres. The GT Academies run on a semi-slick. These cars have a lot more power uh, than the GT Academy machines as well. It is a big step up, make no uh, mistake. That, meanwhile, is a change of position. That is uh, Carl Garnett past James Townsend. He led Townsend by three one-hundredths of a second at the line. But as you can see, he's clearly in front now as they drop down through Cascades. Uh, meanwhile, a second five-second penalty has been added to the timing screen now. We've had one already for Connor Garlic, and now Luke Garlic has had one thrown his way as well. The timing screen not actually telling me what it's for, but I can only assume it's track limits infringements. We've seen a few of them uh, running wide at places like Old Hall, Cascades, Lodge Corner. And so that means that Luke Garlic, uh, with whom you ride on board, he's fourth on the road. He will likely stay fourth on the road because he's gapped Nick White now by a uh, fair chunk. Uh, well, actually, no, only by 4.1 seconds, so he needs a little bit more uh, to guarantee that fourth position, but, of course, third in class likely to go his way regardless, even if he got past Matt Shaw, wouldn't affect his class position. Here's a replay of the back end of that Carl Garnett move. He'd already got the inside at Old Hall Corner, and you can assume that that started in much the same way as a couple of the uh, moves we've seen in this race by sort of outfoxing the car ahead into Lodge Corner. Meanwhile, Hot Hill, uh, we've got a chequered flag. And we weren't expecting a chequered flag, but with curfew coming up within the next few minutes here at Alton Park, they have finished the race early. So Mackenzie Douglas uh, gets to celebrate a little bit early, having won the opening round of the Pro-Tire Motorsport Ginetta GT Championship. And in the end, that move really was very timely, wasn't it? Only a couple of laps from the end of the race, it turned out. He outfoxed uh, Mackenzie Douglas. Now, hang on. Timing screen is saying Douglas the winner. Oh, because McKenna's been given a penalty. Scott McKenna has been given a five second penalty as well. So scratch that, Mackenzie Douglas is the race winner, not Scott McKenna. So Scott McKenna will be doing the victory parade, perhaps thinking that he's the winner, but he at the very last moment has been handed a five second penalty. So that means, unfortunately, because it's not the way that we like to see races uh, decided, uh, Mackenzie Douglas is your race winner, and he probably doesn't even know that either. So Mackenzie Douglas the winner by 2.7 seconds on corrected times over McKenna second, Shaw third, Nick White does jump ahead of Luke Garlic for fourth. 
and Alex Toth Jones does get back ahead of Connor Garlic as well after his time penalty. So a bizarre end to the race. The chequered flag coming out a lap earlier than uh, predicted. But that's because we do have a very strict 6.30 curfew here at Alton Park, and that isn't chequered flag at 6.30. That's cars off the track, engines not running at 6.30 with very, very little leeway, really, uh, for an extension on that. So the decision taken to end the race a lap early, uh, but possibly a lap too late, really, for Scott McKenna, who picked up that penalty right at the very last moment. So there you go. <laughs> Plenty to unpack after that one. Matt Shaw, I'm pretty confident in saying, has won the AM class, though. Matt Shaw didn't uh, do anything wrong in that race. And, pick up a penalty or have a late moment. So he's the AM class winner, finishes on the outright podium and actually on corrected times, less than two tenths behind Scott McKenna. So very nearly inherited second place, but it is Mackenzie Douglas on corrected times who picks up the race victory. Scott McKenna led at the flag, but a five second penalty means he has to settle for second. Matt Shaw in third position, Nick White fourth, uh, and they were the top two AM drivers with Luke Garlic and Alex Tom Jones. Uh, fifth and sixth, Tom Jones benefiting from a Connor Garlic five second penalty. Connor ends up seventh, Carl Garnett eighth but manages to snatch that AM class podium with that late move on James Townsend who was right behind him at the flag. Paul Livesey 10th and Sean Fleming in 11th. So the final race of the day but not the final race of the weekend for uh, Ginetta here at Alton Park. They have another race to come uh, later on so uh, we have uh, in fact, six Ginetta races tomorrow to enjoy. Uh, but our final Ginetta action on our Saturday afternoon here at Alton Park provided one of the races of the day. It was very close at the front at the start. Pole sitter Scott McKenna ultimately losing the lead through the first sequence of corners to Mackenzie Douglas, who spent much of the rest of the race desperately defending that race lead. Matt Shaw did well to stay on the track further back, but did hold on to third place and would dominate the AM class. Great battle mid-race between Alex Top jones and a recovering uh, Connor Garlic, who had previously been off at Lodge, then got involved in some close quarters racing at the same corner a few laps later. At the head of the field, McKenna was hounding Douglas, desperately trying to force a mistake out of the race leader, and eventually he got uh, the better run, as indeed was Connor Garlic doing further back to Alex Top jones There was some great side-by-side -side racing across the line uh, with Lodge Corner and Old Hall Corner, providing much of the entertainment. That was where the move was made by McKenna. A better run out of Old Hall. He cleared Douglas round the outside at Cascades, but unfortunately, in attempting to scarper away, exceeded track limits once too often, picked up a five-second penalty, which meant that it was actually Mackenzie Douglas who claimed the overall victory with Matt Shaw victorious in the outclass. class.